Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's share a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, before this day, Lord, you know I would be standing here years ago to share your word with your people. Your word says that you can use anyone, anyone at all that you choose, Lord. I am not worthy. I am a sinner. But God, I pray tonight that you use me to bring your word of course to your people. Grant me the spirit of oratory, the spirit of eloquence. Give me wisdom to be able to expound your word unto your people. I pray for your spirit to dwell amongst us this evening as I share your word. Amen. Okay. So, <laughs> I've never done this before, but I have dreamt of doing this over and over and over again. And I thank Bishop and I thank God for this opportunity. Tonight, I want us to look at the book of Obadiah. This is the shortest book in the new the old testament i have the king james version but then i'm gonna read i like the um amplified bible version because the english is simple and it's straight to the point so i'm gonna read from there it's just a one chapter book with 21 verses Obadiah 1, 
the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and an ambassador has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, let us rise up against Edom for battle. Behold, Edom, I shall make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The pride and arrogance of your heart have, de have, have deceived you. You have lived in the clefts and lofty security of the rock, whose dwelling place is high, who say boastfully in your heart, who will bring me down to earth. Though you build your nest on the high like the eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, I will bring you down from there, says the Lord. If thieves, if thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how will you be ruined? Will they not steal until, will they not steal only until they had enough? If grapes gatherers came to you, will they not leave some grapes for gleaning? How Esau shall be ransacked by men who came to ravage with divine approval? How his hidden treasures, treasures shall be searched out. All the men allied with you shall send you on your way to the border. The men who were at peace with you shall deceive you and overpower you. Those who ate your bread, that is those you trust, shall set a hostile ambush for you. There is no understanding of it. Will I not on that day, says the Lord, destroy the wise men of Edom and, under and understanding from the mountain of Esau? And your mighty men shall be dismayed and demoralized O oh, Teman, so that everyone from the mountain of Esau may be cut off in the slaughter. Because of your violence, you did against your brother Jacob. Shame shall cover you completely, and you shall be cut off forever. On the, on the day that Jerusalem shall, was destroyed, you stood aloof. On the day that strangers took his forces captive and carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem. You too were like one of them, collaborating with the enemy. Do not gaze and gloat over your brother's day, the day when his misfortune came. Do not rejoice over the sons of Judah in the day of their destruction. Do not arrogantly jeering and maliciously mocking in the day of their distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their distress. Yes, you do not look with delight on their misery in the day of their ruin and do not loot treasures. And in the day of their ruin, do not stand at the crossroad to cut, to cut down those who escaped and do not hand over to the enemy those of Judah who survived in the days of their distress. For the judgment day of the Lord draws near on all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your evil dealings will return to your own head, because just as you, Edom, drank from my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually, one by one, of my wrath. Yes, they shall drink and swallow the full measure of punishment, and become as though they had never existed. But, the, but on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance for those who escape, and it shall be holy and the house of Jacob shall possess their former possessions. And then, then the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau will be like stubble. They, they, that is Jacob, shall set them on fire and consume them, the, the Edomites. So, there, so that there shall be no survivor of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken. Then those of the Negev, it goes on and on and on and on. And at the, um, the last verse, it says, The deliverers shall go up on Mount Zion to rule the judgment, to rule and judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom and the kingship shall be the Lord's. Amen. So Obadiah is a prophet, was a prophet of God. His name means that prophet of Yahweh or prophet of the eternal God. 
And in this book, he was, he had a vision of God destroying the Edomites. The Edomites are descendants of Esau. And we know Israelites is the design, uh, is Jacob. Jacob's name was, ten, uh, was changed to Israel. And his, the 12 tribes of Israel became is the Israelites. So we all know the story about Jacob and Esau. They were twin brothers. And way in ancient times, they had, they had a beef. Because Jacob took Esau's birthright and all that, and he ran away. So this has been going on for years to the point that when the Israelites were in Egypt and God freed them and they were on their way to the promised land, they reached the Edo, where the Edomites were. And they could have gone across, but the Edomites, who were descendants of Esau, because of what had happened years ago, did not grant them any access through their land. So they had to go around and it took them so many years to get to the promised land. What I got from reading this I don't know, about a week ago, I just happened to read this, and I was fascinated by it. What I got from it is that the whole thing, what the, this whole thing is saying is that God will always free his children. The children of God will always be freed by God, no matter what. It is funny how the Bible says that God loves everybody. But when you read the Bible, you can see that he loves some people more than others. I'm sorry. And we can't take that away from him. We know what David did. But then, after all, God said he's a man after his own heart. There is nothing that we can do. What I learned from this is, if God loves somebody, and you do not know that God loves that person more than you, and you are in a fight with that person, no matter what you do, that person will excel because that person already has that, that God on his side. Not that God is not on your side. There is nothing you can do to that person. The more you hate on that person, the more the person grows. The more you do things to that person, the more the person grows. I'm going to liken this to our church. We are here, we serve God. I don't know my, my everything I wrote down, I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> We serve God. We know we serve the living God. Bible says that when God called his disciples, Judah was there. God called him. He was amongst the 12. But in the end, what happened? He betrayed God. We can liken this to this church. Not everyone that comes here is for us. Physically, they are here. Spiritually, they are not. They do not share the vision of this church. They do not share the mission of this church. But then ask yourself why they are here. Why do you come to a place every Sunday, but you're not wholly part of it? There are two reasons why you come. Either to bear the, weak, the, the weaknesses of the church to the enemy. Or you are only here for the covering. Because you know there is something here that you like. You, you lack, sorry. That you lack in your life. When you read Obadiah. The first uh, chapter to the ninth chapter. Talks about the pride of the Edomites. When you read the history of the Edomites, Edomites was, I mean, the, the, where the Edomites' land was, it was on top of the highest mountain. And that mountain was higher than Mount Zion. And we know that Mount Zion is like for the Israelites, Jerusalem. That is where they go and worship and all that. So because of their location, they were proud. And there were rocks around them. So before you could, you could, you go to battle with them, before you could defeat them, then it's only by God that you can defeat. They were very strong. They were a strong group. And because of their, 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 their location, they were so proud that they felt like nothing could touch them. They felt like nothing could, could touch them. To the point that even... When Israelites were going on um, war with other people, 
they went against the Israelites. You would think that because Jacob and Esau were brothers, they would go for the, um, for the um, Israelites. But they went against the Israelites. And the Israelites only had God. They only had God. These people had physical help from everybody else. And everybody was afraid of them. The, the, Philist the uh, Philistines, the Amorites, everybody was afraid of them. They would join to fight the Israelites. That was all they had. The Israelites only had God. But in the end, any time the Israelites called on their God, things happened. Any time they called on God, he came to their rescue. So, in this church, like I said before, we believe in, 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 in the God above. We have no other God but him. So no matter what is going on around us, this is the promise that God has given us. He says that he will judge those who fight against his children. That is his chosen people. So tonight, I want us to pray. I want us to pray on the word. This is God's word. This is God's promise to his people. The things that he said he would do to the, to the Edomites. That is what we are going to decree upon those that are fighting. We don't know them, but we know they exist. They don't sleep. We know they exist. God said that he will use their, their own people, their own allies, their own friends, people that they eat with, people that they trust. God is going to use them to defeat them. And those people will not be judged by God. Because he said, it, he said it in his word. God has given them divine authority to judge them, to bring them down. So I want you to stand up this evening so that we can pray on the word of God. We're going to use these words and his promises to us. If we believe that we are children and we are the church of God and we are his children, this is his promise to us. He said that whatever possession has been taken from us, we are, he's going to return it back to us. Whatever joy has been stolen from us in this church, he's going to bring it back. Just think about the things that has, has gone on years and years in this church. He's going to bring it back to us. Before we start, I just want us to pray our first prayer. We are going to pray for members of this church. Those that are with us physically, but they are not with us spiritually. We're going to ask God to grant them a renewal of heart and mind. Because after all, they are his creation too. Like I said, they come here for two reasons. To let the enemy know our weaknesses so the enemy can come in and destroy and attack. Or just for the covering. And if it is for the first reason why they come here, we are going to pray that may God blind them spiritually to the weaknesses of this house. That whenever they come here, anything, they will not get anything to take to the enemy. Beloved, the Bible says that whenever God guided with his, with his angels, the devil is there. He's the accuser of the brethren. He is right there. He knows what goes on. So this evening, before we start condemning, breaking, and demolishing the enemy, I want us to pray for those that are here with us, that are here physically once again, but not spiritually. Those that do not share the vision and the mission of this church. Let us pray. Father in heaven, let's sin that we thank you, Lord.
Father, Lord, we bless your holy name, Lord, we thank you for your message, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you, we bless you, Lord Jesus. We pray for those that are us, Father, Lord Jesus, that are not of you, Lord Jesus. King of kings, we bless you. We pray, that, Lord Jesus, whoever comes to sit here with us, Father, fellowship with us, Lord Jesus. And we ask, Father, Lord Jesus, and enjoy whatever goes on in this house, but it's not of us. Heavenly Father, this evening we pray and we ask that, Lord Jesus, you grant them a renewal of heart and a renewal of mind. Everybody of kings will be with you, Lord Jesus. Any nakedness, Father, any weakness, Lord, that they want to take out there, Father, Lord, to the enemy, Father, Lord, today, we consider that we blind them spiritually. When they come here, Lord Jesus, may they find nothing to take to the enemy. May they find nothing to take away to the enemy, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, and we lift you up, Lord Jesus. We know that you can do this, Heavenly Father. Father, Lord, we demoralize them this morning, Lord. We praise you, Lord, and lift you up. Holy Spirit, Lord. We grant you all the grace and adoration, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you to strengthen us in the name. Show yourself for the more short, Father Lord Jesus. When we gather and we meet and they come around, Heavenly Father, you know them. We don't, Father, but you know them, Father Lord Jesus. We pray for spiritual blindness, Heavenly Father. We mute their ears to anything, Father Lord, that they can take out, Father. And we blind them, Lord. Hide our weaknesses, Lord. Hide our weaknesses from them, Heavenly Father. Because when the enemy gets our weaknesses, that is where they can swoop in, Father Lord, and cause disaster in your home, Father. Father Lord, we pray. We cannot watch us. The enemy will not care, Father Lord Jesus. Anything that is going on here, Lord, that they will take away, Father Lord, to break us down. Continue to build your church, Lord Jesus. Bring us together, Lord. We bless your holy name, Heavenly Father. We bless you and we thank you. Amen. Beloved, we continue to pray. We continue to pray against the spirit of insubordination in the house of God. When you read Numbers, we were told that Miriam spoke against Moses when he, he, he got married to an Ethiopian. He was like, they, Miriam said that, was it only Moses' things that was he the only one that God spoke to? Because God spoke to her and Aaron too. And Bible says, when God heard that, he made Miriam a leper. Beloved, in the kingdom of God, there is order. In every Christian society, there is order. There must be order. Not everybody can lead. Not everybody can lead in the house of God. That is why you have archbishop, you have bishop, you have reverend, you have pastors, you have ministers, you have elders. I want us to pray against insubordination in this house. When you read Numbers, you continue to read the 27th chapter. Bible said that until Moses prayed for Miriam, Miriam was a leper. God had chosen Moses. God did not choose Miriam. God did not choose Aaron. But they spoke against Moses and that was what happened to them. We do not want such to happen to anybody in this house. Amen. Join me as we pray against insubordination amongst the leaders of this church. Bible says the oil runs from the top. Yes. So therefore, Insubordination is a sin. We all know the bishop is the head of this house. He is so free with us that sometimes <laughs> we might just go above the limit. We might take things for granted. You might say in your mind that you've not been insubordinate. Maybe you have, maybe I have. Once the enemy knows that there's no order here, 
that is one of our weakest links. That is one of our downfalls. I want us to pray against insubordination right this minute. Pray with me. Father, this evening, Lord Jesus, we pray against this subordination in your house, Father Lord. Father Lord Jesus, your word says that, Lord Jesus, the oil runs from the top. Heavenly Father, we pray that in the hearts, by the person that you look into the hearts of men, Father Lord. Anyone, Father Lord, amongst us, Father Lord, amongst the pastors, amongst the ministers, amongst the leaders, amongst the church members, Father Lord, who have showed any sign of insubordination tonight, Father, we pray and we ask for forgiveness for that person. Father, we pray that there will be order in this house. Father, we pray that there will be respect in this house. Father, we pray that we will all follow Father Lord, the leadership of this house. Who has the vision? He alone knows the vision that you are giving him, Father Lord. If there is something that we do not understand, Father Lord, it is better we go to him than to, to be rude, Father Lord, to be respectful. We cancel in subordination, the spirit of insubordination, because that is what created the devil in the First place. He was in somebody, Father Lord, in heaven, and he was cast down. Father Lord, we pray that none of us here, Father Lord, will be cast down because of his subordination, Father Lord, to your We give you glory, Lord, to Heavenly Father. We cancel his subordination, Heavenly Father. In the house of God, Father Lord, you say, and you pray, Lord Jesus, that oil flows from the top. We pray, Heavenly Father, that anyone that is arrogant, anyone that is prideful amongst us, Father Lord Jesus, will be humble. We pray for the spirit of humility, Father Lord, amongst your people. We pray for the spirit of humility amongst your people, Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. We bless your holy name. And we thank you this evening, Father Lord, for constant subordination amongst us, Father Lord, in the King's house church. King of Kings, we bless you and we praise your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless you. And we thank you. We give you all the glory. Beloved, we continue to pray. When you read the verse 8, sorry, verse 9 of Obadiah, Obadiah, it says that, and the mighty men shall be dismayed and demoralized, O Teman. Teman was a great city um, of the Edomites. Most of their warriors were in, were in Teman. But, but the, the Lord says that the mighty men shall be dismayed and demoralized. When they say they, are, they will be demoralized, it means they will be decapitated, like they will be paralyzed. There is nothing that they can do. Tonight we are praying. We are praying against any stronghold. We are praying against any strong man or woman that has been assigned to the King's House Church. This evening we are demoralizing them. We are decapitating them. We are rendering them useless. Jesus. <laughs> We are rendering them useless. Jesus. Their works and their weapons will amount to nothing. Jesus. They have done enough. Jesus. This is what the God of heaven is telling us. He says that he will do that so that everyone will know. Yes, Lord. <laughs> From the mountain of Esau. That he is God. Yes, Lord. So tonight we are praying that he should do what his word says. So yes. everyone will know that we of the King's House Church, we serve a living God. Yes. Let us pray. Father, this is me, Lord. We pray against any stronghold that has been set up against your church. King of kings, we pray against any strong man, Father Lord. Any group of people, Father Lord, that have gathered against your church. Heavenly Father, we cry no more, Lord. We cry no more, Heavenly Father. You said that you would demoralize them. Heavenly Father, this is your promise to us. This evening we are praying. King of kings, we are praying. We are asking the Heavenly Father. You demand them. 
Father Lord, bring the power of praise, Father Lord. Father, Lord. Lord. Whatever they are Lord. using against us, Father Lord Jesus, we render and we decree that those things will not work for them. It will not work for them anymore. Lord Jesus, we pray and we ask that you continue, Father Lord, to be against our enemies. Father Lord, we come against our enemies, Father Lord. This fight is your fight. This fight is your fight, Heavenly Father. This fight is your fight, Father Lord. We ask that Father Lord, you bring them to Father Lord, you the whole way you can. Okay, South Church is calling upon you this year. Father Lord, you have done enough for your children. Father, your children have been disgraced in that, Heavenly Father. Father Lord, we have been mocked at, Lord Jesus. We have been laughed at. Our enemies have been at us, Father Lord, as our misfortunes. Father, tonight we pray and we ask that no more, Father Lord. Just as you promised the Israelites, Father Lord, that you would have done, Father Lord, their enemies tonight. We know we are children of God. Father Lord, we know that we are descendants, Father Lord of Abraham. Father Lord, tonight we are claiming our Abrahamic blessings. We are claiming our Abrahamic blessings, Lord. We pray, we keep the Lord, Lord. Cut them off, Heavenly Father. Cut them off, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, we pray that, Lord, you bring them down, Lord. Whatever their plans is, Father Lord, we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will lift us up, Father Lord. Lift us up, Father Lord, in your presence. Let them know that we serve a living God. We are turning back to keep the run of Lord Jesus. We know you have done it. We know you have done it. Lord. We keep it all the high. 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 Jesus. Beloved, let's come, let's come together. Please come to the front. When you read the same verse, it says that God was going to use the same people that the Edomites fed. The same people they called their allies. He was going to use them to destroy them. He was going to give those people divine authority to destroy the people of Edom. This is going to be our next prayer. You know how it hurts when you, you're friends with somebody and the person does something bad to you or the person betrays you. That is how God wanted to hurt the people of Edom. In our next prayer, we're going to pray. That may God not use none of us here. <laughs> may God use the same people that they plan with. May God use those same people to bring them down. Like I said, if somebody is amongst us, the person can take our weakness over there. So whoever is with them knows their weakness. Whoever eats with them, whoever they mingle with, know them. Yes. So we are going to pray that may God use their own people to destroy them. May God set confusion amongst them. When you read, it says that there will be no understanding of what has gone on. Yes. Before they realized, they've eaten themselves up. Jesus. Bible said that when Absalom was chasing, um, looking for David to kill him, Ahithophel, he was trying to get information from Ahithophel. But David said that may the counsel of Ahithophel be foolish. So we are praying that who the people that are with the, the enemies, whatever plans they are giving them, whatever, whatever, um, what do we call it? Whatever information, information they are giving them, <laughs> may it be seen as foolish. Yes. Although the plans may be wise. May God turn into foolish. Jesus. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father in heaven, we praise Lord Jesus. We give you God the glory, Lord. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, that the enemies of this church, Father Lord Jesus, Father Lord, will be scattered, Father Lord. May they use their own people, Father Lord. 
May their hearts so, Father Lord, be foolish in your eyes, Father Lord. We pray and we ask that Lord Jesus, Lord, do not let the enemy, Father Lord, concerning us, Father Lord Jesus, shall come to pass. Heavenly Father, we pray and we ask that Lord, and the information that is taken here, whatever counsel they are given, Father Lord Jesus, will be seen as foolish, Father Lord, in their eyes. May they, Father Lord, we set confusion in their camp. We set confusion in their camp. We set confusion in their camp. Now, Father Lord Jesus, they will fight against themselves, Father Lord Jesus. They will destroy, Father Lord, their own plans. Whatever plans they have against this church, Father Lord, will not be executed, Lord. We give you honor. Father Lord, you said you would deliver your people. You said that, Father Lord Jesus, this fight is yours. Father Lord, we have given it to you, Heavenly Father. The King's house church tonight is saying that, Father Lord, let the confusion, Father Lord, be in their camp. Let them use their own allies, their own friends, Father Lord, to bring them down. Father Lord, Lord, use their own enemies to bring them down. Father Lord, people that they eat, people where that they talk to, people that they, that they go everywhere with, Father Lord, use their own kind, Father Lord, to bring them down. Bring them down, Heavenly Father, we pull them down, Father Lord. Lord, please, Father Lord, against this church, Father Lord Jesus, will stand. Father Lord Jesus, whatever they say against this church, Father Lord Jesus, may it be turned to foolishness, Father Lord, in the eyes of God. Heavenly Father, we pray and we ask that Lord, you and you alone, Father Lord Jesus, Lord, we want to pray, Father Lord. You are a consuming fire, Lord Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless you for fighting this fight for us. Bring and destroy our enemy, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. As you continue to read, it says that the Lord shall set a fire around Jerusalem. Yes. God shall set fire around Jerusalem. Yes. And there shall be no survivor in the house of Esau. We are going to pray. Yes. That may the fire of God be set around the King's House Church and its members. May it be set around the King's House Church that the enemy cannot enter. May he conquer our enemies. It says Esau will become like a stubble. A stubble is like when you, you a crop that is cut off. It's just there. It's dry. It doesn't, it doesn't grow. It's, it withers. May our enemies wither in front of us. Yes. And may he set a hedge of fire around us and protect us from the plants of the enemy. Let us pray. Father Lord, today we pray, Lord. We thank you, Father Lord. We ask that your fire, Lord Jesus, will surround your people and your house. Heavenly Father, that the enemy will not be able to enter to destroy everything. Father Lord, we pray that you be a hedge of fire, a hedge of protection around each and every one, Father Lord, of the King's South Church. Father, when we meet in your name, Father Lord, let your fire be around us, Father Lord. Wherever we go, Father Lord Jesus, set us apart Father Lord, we pray that the enemy, Father Lord Jesus, no matter what they say, Father Lord, they will wither, Father Lord, they will wither at the sight of your people, they will wither, Father Lord, there is no growing up, Father Lord, in them, Lord Jesus, set your head of fire, set your head of fire around us, Father Lord.